in this video we are going to look into something that's very important as well as very basic for flux programming we will be using various examples for this uh, the first example is using where with loops so I'm just going to create a, an array of uh, these strings called fruits and just run them through a for loop, a very simple for loop. That's it. So what I'm going to do in the next one to the same code is I'm just going to add these bits here. These bits. And what this does is it only lets when this condition is true to run through this for loop, for example. Uh, we have here where fruit equals mango so only the mango will go through the for loop next example we have tuples here uh, this is a simple example where a simple fruit equals you know, uh, mango string and it goes to another simple switch case and uh, you get the idea what's happening here it's a very simple switch case so what we're going to do to do this is we want to have tuple instead of this fruit here so we can check if the tuple as uh, as a whole is true or the the case satisfies uh, the tuple as a whole here we have a tuple of banana and mango, two strings, and it is a fruit, so case, banana, and mango. It prints is a banana and mango, it's banana and mango. Now, in this one, we uh, were not able to access this uh, mango directly through this this statement. So to solve that, we have implemented a let second fruit here. So which which allows us to access the second one, in this case apple, through the print statement. So in the output, we can say it's a banana and apple. In the next example, uh, we have an underscore in the in place of the third item in the tuple which allows us to just select these two and care about these two and not care about what the third one is. So here uh, we are accessing the second fruit from here like just like the previous one and I don't care about the third one. So what the third one is, mango, it doesn't matter. We can put potato here, anything here, it doesn't matter. So in this one, uh, we're using uh, this is called calculated case. Um, so what this one does is, that when the first one is apple uh, fruit dot zero, meaning we're accessing the first element of this tuple, and we're accessing the second element of the tuple through fruit dot one here. And when fruit equals apple, fruit one, uh, the first equal apple and second equal banana, both true, then it prints out the first comes apple, then comes banana. It's, I hope you're getting it. It's pretty simple. And in output, we're getting first comes apple and second comes banana. Now we're using pattern matching with types. We pattern match with tuples, we pattern match with uh, various things. Now we're doing it with types. So for that, we're creating two protocols, pulpy and hard. We're creating three structs here, um, apple, banana, mango. Apple is hard. Uh, apple, the fruit, is hard. Banana, it's pulpy, and mango, it's pulpy. So let's create an array here uh, of type any where we put an apple, banana, and mango to create an instances of those uh, these structs. 
So I'm going to run them through a for loop where fruits and fruit where for fruits and fruits where fruit is hard. If fruit is hard, then it get runs through this for loop. So the only element that's hard in this uh, array is apple, and that's it. So in the output, we're getting apple. And if we were to turn this hard into pulpy here, then where fruit is pulpy, print fruit, and the only two elements that are that are pulpy runs through this for loop, banana and mango. In the output, you can see banana and mango. Uh, using switch case with loops and swift. Uh, before this, we were using where like this. Now let's uh, use case in here instead of where to do some things differently. So uh, here's a simple tuple again. Uh, name apple, type hard, banana, the same thing, mango, the same thing. Just the types are different. Obviously names are different, but you know what I mean. So we create an array of apple, banana, and mango, just like we were doing in the type. In this case, uh, so we're doing the similar thing here, we're just not creating any protocols and structs. It, it's just tuples. Fruits, uh, apple, banana, mango. Here, we're using for case. Uh, we've already talked about how underscore means it doesn't matter what it is. And all we care about is the type is pulpy. If type is pulpy, we don't care what the name of the fruit is in fruits so we're using if uh, if the for case uh, if the for statement uh, for loop was for i equal to 1 to 10 so instead of that uh, we have for case 5 in 1 to 10 so only 5 will get uh, executed through the for loop similarly here we have these pulpy fruits. So only these two are pulpy, so we have two types. I like pulpy fruits, I like pulpy fruits. So I here want to know what the name of fruit is too. So how do I do that? So what I do here is I use let fruit here instead of this underscore. I use let fruit, which allows this print statement to access the first element of the tuple. So I like pulpy fruit accessing this. So what I get in output is I like pulpy banana, I like pulpy mango. So can you see the difference in these two? In the first one, uh, the break bracket is here. Is this called bracket? Probably. No. Hmm. We'll talk about that later. Uh, in the first one, we have uh, let fruit inside this uh, tuple. In the second one, we get the let out. And we Get the fruit, uh, the name we want here, let inside it. So it's the same, we're getting the same results from this. Now, what we're doing now is using another let here, type here. So if, uh, if we were putting the let inside the, the tuple, we would have to use let fruit, let type. So if we put the let outside here, we can just go with let fruit, comma type in fruits. I print I like type and fruit. So we are displaying all three. I like hard apple, I like pulpy banana, and I like pulpy mango. Using range with Swift in 
Using range with switch case and thrift. Using range and switch case. So here we have five fruits in here. Two of those are apple, two of those are mango, and just one banana. Okay. So what we want to do here is look into the count of this fruit and predict uh, the range of it. Here, what we are doing is uh, accessing the count with fruits.count in the switch. And in case it's in between 3 and 7, the print statement will be in range of 4 to 7. It should be 3. I made a mistake, but it would print uh, in, case, in the range of 3 to 7. So, since it is 5, it is all definitely in the range of 3 to 7. Hence, the output in the range of 3 to 7. Finally, we will be using optionals with switch case. So uh, let's create the first uh, optional string uh, that says apple, second says melon, second says nothing. And the third one says mango. Here, we do uh, we create the switch statement uh, and we put a total of three elements. Uh, the first one, second one, third one. And in case we just like we put let outside here and assign the first one to be first optional, middle, and third. So we know that the second one will be nil. If, if we want to see the case where the second one is nil, we do this. And we, print, we can print out first, empty, and third. Apple, empty, and mango. Apple, empty, mango. And instead of uh, nil, when we add value here, apple, banana, mango, fruit one, first, second, and third, we put second element in here. Before we had nil in the case, now we have second. Print first, second, and third. So what we get the output is apple, banana, and mango. So this was it. See you on the next one, and keep being a Swiftaholic.